um, occupation that falls under artificial intelligence and information technology so they have a subcomponent where english applicants can also apply so if you're a non-french speaking person hello beautiful people welcome back to the canada info hub channel my name is wolo i live in winnipeg manitoba canada and i love to talk about everything canada including immigrating to canada so last week was very tiring for me i just decided to take some time to rest i was supposed to upload this video last week but i just was so tired i said i would rest okay if this is the first time you're seeing my face i'll request that you subscribe to this channel and give me the thumbs up destroy the like button yes that's what i usually tell people you don't need me to remind you of destroying the like button <laughs> but don't spoil your phone don't smash your tv don't smash your monitor or your computer or whatever you're using to watch this video just give me thumbs up that's all i need anyway so how are you doing hope you're doing okay you're doing great it's a beautiful new week and i pray it is beautiful for every one of you in my last video i said i was going to talk about the french um immigration that's because of the latest increase to the points for people who are bilingual people who know french they will now start getting 50 points if you're bilingual and if you have a b2 in the test the evaluation Francaise um exam so if you have created an express entry profile and you're a bilingual person and you've gotten a b2 you have a better chance of getting more scores now and I talked about it in my last video. I said I was going to go into details, including talking about Quebec immigration in this particular video. So for those who don't know, you now need to add French to actually boost your scores. So it is very, very um, important that you start learning French. Yeah, if you know that you're determined to come into Canada, it is very important you start learning French and learn French to the point where you take the exams, you get a B2 in the exams and then you'll be eligible for different provincial nominations. So I'll be talking about the provincial nominations that you will be eligible for if you are bilingual. Number one is Ontario. And Ontario, they have no restriction when it comes to choosing people from the express entry pool, especially those who are bilingual. So what you do is you choose French as your primary language and then English as your secondary language, as long as the French is a B2. When I mean a B2, you have a B2 on all four factors. B2 in speaking, reading, listening and writing on all four factors. It is best for you to choose French as your primary language for you to get a provincial nomination from Ontario. And Ontario actually have been giving provincial nomination to people who have a comprehensive ranking score as low as 440, 450. In fact, last year they gave to people who had a comprehensive ranking score of 330. It was that low because they were bilingual. So that's one thing for Ontario. If you're targeting Ontario to get a provincial nomination, I've already explained it before. Put your primary language as French and then you get a provincial nomination from Ontario. Uh, they are not restrictive when it comes to the occupations or the knocks. They just choose everybody as long as they've chosen French as their primary language for those who are already in the express entry pool. So that's number one province. Number two province is New Brunswick. New Brunswick has a French pathway that is strictly for people who are bilingual. And you just have to create your profile on their, um, on their webpage and also indicate it in your express entry profile that you're bilingual. Once you do that, they select you from the express entry pool and give you a provincial nomination. So that's number two for New Brunswick. Number three is Manitoba. Manitoba, from time to time, um, opens a pathway for bilingual people to come to Canada for an exploratory visit first and after that they'll have to do an interview and then give them a nomination so that is it for Manitoba once they publish the time they open for francophone people I usually announce it I've announced it once on this channel um, you could check the video out I'll leave it in the description box of this video so that you check it out and once they announce it again this year I would let you know. I don't know, maybe if they will announce it or because of COVID. Manitoba has been funny since last year. They've been very funny since last year. So that is it for Manitoba. 
Then the fourth province that I know gives provincial nomination to French speaking people is um, Nova Scotia. They selected bilingual nurses from the express entry pool and gave them provincial nominations. So these are the four provinces that give you provincial nominations. Then the fifth one I want to talk about is a major one which is Quebec. Quebec is also a province in Canada and their immigration pathway is actually very different from the other pathway. So what you need to know is they have the ARIMA portal where you have to create your profile and then um, they do some selection draws once in a while depending on the criteria they set for the draw. So recently they announced three permanent immigration pilots that will start in 2021 and end in 2026. The pilot is for food processing workers, nurse aides, um, information technology professionals that, ha that are good in um, artificial intelligence and some other IT professions. I'll list the knock codes so that you see the knock codes that are eligible for this permanent pathway. So if you're bilingual, you can create the ARIMA portal. But what they are concentrating on is actually people who have permanent job offers uh, and are currently working in Quebec. Those are the ones they actually give it nominations to and also to immigrate under the Quebec immigration pathway. So like I mentioned, the pathway is actually different from the other parts of Canada immigration. And I would leave the point assessment where you have to look at the point assessment to assess yourself if you were able to get enough points. They place major emphasis on people who are bilingual. If you can speak French very well and you can write in French very well. They give you more points compared to the English language. So they lay more emphasis on French. So once you see the point assessment grid, you shall assess yourself if you'll be able to pass through the ARIMA portal. They also introduced a new option for employers to actually select um, people from the ARIMA portal and give them job offers. There's also something I need to mention as well for the French speaking people. So if you're a bilingual person, you have an opportunity of getting a job offer without needing a labor market impact assessment to work in Canada. And what you do is you have to search for any job that is suitable for you, apply to the job and just stay positive. You could get an invitation to attend an interview and then from there, they will be processing your work permits to come and start working in Canada without necessarily needing a labor market impact assessment as long as the job offer is anywhere within Canada besides Quebec. You know, Quebec has their own immigration pathway, which I just recently talked about. Another thing about being like bilingual also is that you earn more money compared to somebody who um, is not bilingual. I almost forgot this aspect of the three permanent immigration pathway that was introduced um, by the Quebec government and that it has to do with the um, occupation that falls under artificial intelligence and information technology. So they have a subcomponent where English applicants can also apply. So if you're a non-French speaking person and you got a job offer in in Quebec, you can also apply for that immigration pathway as well. So what you're supposed to do is actually to start searching for jobs as long as you are an information technology person and your knock code is found on that list, what you can do is start searching for a job. So that's the good part of it. They are not so strict in this aspect when it comes to information technology. They relaxed the rules. They also mentioned they'll be giving 138 selection certificates to French speakers and then 137 selection certificates to non-French speakers. So if you want to be among the 137 non-French speakers, if you're an English person and you're an information technology professional, the best thing you should do is to start searching for a job, especially if you know that your knock code is among the knock code listed for um, the occupations that are eligible under that immigration pathway. So this is the information I want to share. I also would like to let you know that for Quebec, if you have to immigrate under Quebec, it is best to seek the advice of a regulated immigration consultant who is regulated in Quebec because their regulation is also different. And yeah, seek the advice of that person before you put in your application because Quebec is quite, quite very tricky. I don't want you to go ahead and do it yourself and then you start having issues along the way. You can do it yourself if you want to actually do it yourself, but I will recommend you seek the advice of a regulated Canadian immigration consultant that is regulated to work in Quebec. Okay, so for those who want to apply under the food processing and nurse aid pathways, the only thing you can do is to start searching for a job. 
but you have to be bilingual if you are not a bilingual person and you're searching for a job it's it will be very difficult because they are looking for people who can't speak french not people who can only speak english so it's an opportunity for you to start learning french um there is no harm in trying to learn french if you know that this is the only way you can get into canada maybe through a job search and through a job offer um you should start searching for a job yeah so you also need a quebec standard resume which is very different from the canadian standard resume and um, you can start searching for a job using any of the websites i'll be leaving in the description box of this video so this is the information i want to share for you today and i hope you are going to take action because i know that there are a lot of people who want to immigrate but few of them are actually taking action when it comes to immigrating so i want you to take action don't just uh, be wishing that you want to immigrate without taking the necessary action you need to take and another thing is beware of agents beware of fraudsters beware of people promising you job offers promising you uh, a pathway or promising you something that is very very bogus those things they don't exist if it is too good to be true then you run away from it run away from people who are asking you for money to help you look for a job those guys they will just eat your money they will not do anything for you so please don't fall victim to such people so that's the information i want to share today and i also would like to say that um i'll be coming on live on saturday with marina i've already put the information on this channel on the community page of this channel that i'll be coming on live with marina on saturday so that's all i want to share for you today thank you so much for watching and don't forget to smash the like button subscribe to this channel share this video with your friends and family and see you on my live video with marina on saturday have a good week bye